Hi, what's up you guys? How's it going? Welcome to Vlogmas Day 14. So, I've made a few videos in the past where I talk about my job, the fact that I'm a software engineer, starting my new job in London, all of that jazz, and people seem to be really interested in that part of my life. People have been asking me tons of questions regarding how I got a job at Bloomberg or how I got through the interviews, how I prepared for the interviews, what my university experience was like. By the way, I love hearing from you guys and I love when people send me messages and stuff so thank you everyone who reached out to me because this has been such a requested topic I'll cover some of those questions in today's video and basically I'm gonna tell you how I prepared for my job interviews make sure you watch until the end of this video to see what we got in the advent calendars today and please subscribe if you haven't already I would really appreciate your support so let's get into it because it's gonna be another long one first of all in case you don't know I did a computer science degree at the University of Manchester so obviously that helped me a lot to be prepared for a job interview for software engineering however I'm currently working with people from physics background chemical engineering mechanical engineering I know some companies even hire people from not so tech uh, related degrees a lot of companies provide training on the job as long as you're the right person so if you didn't get a computer science degree that doesn't necessarily mean you can't get into software engineering but obviously that did help me a lot and of course hardcore tech companies would probably look for a tech related degree even if it's not exactly computer science they'll be looking for people from some sort of engineering the next thing that prepared me for my interviews were my internships and I realized that this is more of a long-term preparation and of course isn't something that you're gonna do the two months before your interview to give you a bit of context during uni I did a 12-month internship at JP Morgan and I also did a summer internship at Amazon these internships gave me so much experience and so much knowledge that I could not get from university because there are certain things that they just cannot teach you at university but the point of internships is for you to learn how to apply all of the knowledge you get from university how does it apply in your real life job I really 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 cannot stress enough how important it is to get an internship you gain so much valuable experience and you're probably gonna have these moments of struggling and being frustrated and being in difficult situations all of that this is so much material for your interviews every company that i've applied for if i haven't been rejected before that i will get to an interview where they ask me questions like tell me a time when you were in a difficult situation or tell me a time when you were in a team but the team wasn't working great or tell me about a time when um, there was someone new in your team how did you help them settle in they're gonna ask you these questions and it doesn't necessarily have to be professional experience that you're talking about but if you go and get some internship experience these questions become easy peasy lemon squeezy because you're basically just telling your story you don't have to think hard internships give you so much material for you to discuss with your interviewers and it basically gives you something for all of these questions that they are gonna ask you if you get to that point in the process they will ask those questions and I'm not talking about Bloomberg by the way I'm talking about all companies all companies that I've applied to and that includes Amazon includes Skyscanner includes Google includes Bloomberg JP Morgan Expedia Uber where else have I applied the HUD group I've applied all over the place by the way um, these are just some examples I am pretty sure there will be more but all of these companies that I've at least applied for you get these kind of questions and you need to have something to show that you have enough experience and not just technical experience and knowledge but enough experience of working and working with people and dealing with certain situations so when you have internships you have all of that all of these things that people say they are with internships you don't have to say it you show that you are passionate hardworking, driven you show all of that you show that you care enough to go out there and find an internship which could be difficult when you're just out of uni or when you're still at uni it's not easy when you don't have any experience on your cv to find an internship bear in mind that some companies at least from my experience when it comes to full-time positions not internships but when it comes to full-time positions they are looking to hire people who have at least one internship they don't want to hire someone who has zero experience in the industry and someone who's gonna have to learn what a stand-up is or what i don't know what deadline is you know what i mean so a lot of companies when they're looking for full-time employees would 
and I mean big companies like the big names a lot of them would look for people who have at least some professional experience whether it's internship or apprenticeship or you've just worked for a smaller software engineering company it doesn't matter if you're looking to get into those big names you're gonna need some kind of professional experience enough about internships let's move on to the more technical stuff how I prepare for my technical interviews apologies if I don't say anything that you don't know already but to be honest most companies that I've applied for, their interviews are pretty similar. Coding challenges. Most tech companies would give you coding challenges and most of them will have multiple rounds of coding challenges. A lot of them would start with a challenge that you do on your own. They'll send you a link and you're just gonna have to do it in a certain amount of time. Some would do phone interviews first and then if you pass this first round, you would usually go on site. By the way, this is pre-COVID. I'm guessing right now everything's online. But usually if you pass the first round, you're gonna get to your on-site interviews and then you're gonna do more coding challenges. And this time you're gonna do it in front of people staring at you. So it's not the most comfortable experience. There is a bit more pressure once you're on site because there's people literally watching you and usually they help you and the point is for you to talk with them. It's not literally just them staring at you. So it is uncomfortable, at least I've always found those interviews uncomfortable. I think some people enjoy them. I am not one of those people. I do enjoy the HR kind of interviews where we just chat and stuff, which I'm gonna cover later, but the coding challenges, they've never been my thing. I do like the, the coding problems themselves, but just the situation where, for example, I'm writing code on a whiteboard and people are looking at me, it's not comfortable, okay? But you just have to go with it because that's just how it works, unfortunately. How you prepare for those coding challenges? Let me just say, before uni, I haven't done any programming. I'm not one of those people who have been coding since they were eight. By the way, I really admire those people, don't get me wrong. I'm quite jealous of them, frankly, but I am not one of them. So all these interviews, interview coding challenges they were not easy for me I really struggled in the beginning the good thing is the more you do them the better you get at them and I guess that's kind of obvious but it's true I started with hacker rank and hacker rank is pretty good but I soon got into lead code as well and I think lead code and hacker rank are probably the most famous platforms for solving these kind of problems but it doesn't matter whichever platform you choose you just need to go on there and solve as many problems as you can and don't just cram like 50 problems the day before your interview start early and do at least one problem every day that's what i was doing especially for my full-time job i was at uni i wanted to do at least one hour of coding each day i mean when i say coding i mean coding for interview type of questions obviously i was doing a lot more coding for uni but that's different so i was doing at least one hour per day usually more and even if I don't solve a full challenge in that one hour, which sometimes would happen if the problem was very difficult, I would still get that one hour and just sit down and work day after day after day. And a lot of the days it was way more than one hour. And when it was close to an interview, I would do coding challenges all day. So I wish I could tell you there's like a secret and something that would just magically work. No, there isn't. You just have to work really hard for it. Some people find these kind of challenges a lot easier than others. And if you're one of them, you're quite lucky. That means you don't have to work as hard. But I'm not one of them and I still made it. So at least that should give you some hope. Personally, I prefer lead code to hacker. I feel like lead code has a lot more problems and I feel like there's a lot more variety. I feel like hacker rank is good to start with and then you move on to lead code. At least that was my experience. And I personally paid for the premium subscription on lead code. I only did that when I was looking for a full-time job. And I think the premium subscription among other things just gives you access to any problem because otherwise some problems are for free and then others are not. I just wanted to go on there, do my thing, so I paid for lead code and I still think it was a great investment but obviously you can make that judgment for yourself. I'm sure you've heard of Cracking the Coding Interview, that famous book and I do have that book actually, let me show you. Here it is and I'm sure most of you would have it, it's this chunky massive book. I've used it a lot. Oof. And what do I think about this book? Well, this might be a very unpopular opinion, but I actually don't like it. Out of everything that I've used to prepare for interviews, this is my least favorite. And I'm gonna tell you why. Basically, if you're writing a book that is supposed to teach someone how to do something, I don't think you should have sentences like, oh, and here it's obvious that the result is this and that, and it's also obvious why we do this, so we get that. 
like if it's obvious I wouldn't be reading your book and when you read things that are supposed to be obvious but they're not obvious to you you start to feel like a dumb dumb and that's not a good feeling to have I did not really appreciate the style of teaching in it and of course that is my personal opinion that's my two cents on the book please don't come for me if you love it I'm sure a lot of people love it so that is just one person's opinion in terms of topics that you need to cover you're gonna find a lot of information online i'm not gonna go into like a lot of detail but basically you should know all of your basic data structures and algorithms so data structures that you need to be familiar with are lists linked lists arrays um sets hash maps hash sets trees binary trees graphs stacks your fundamental data structures you need to know what they are how are they used when are they used what are they used for their complexity in terms of insertion deletion searching actually a lot of coding problems are very easy to solve as long as you think of the right data structure which would basically solve the problem for you but in order for you to think of it you need to have a lot of practice to know that this data structure is available it's somewhere out there and it's good to use in that kind of problem so you need to know these in terms of algorithms all of your searching sorting algorithms graph traversal traversal <laughs> this is a tongue twister traversal algorithms for trees and graphs all of those are gonna come up so just have a look online and you're gonna find a lot of resources on things that you should know for your interviews also hackerang can lead code and i'm sure a lot of other platforms they can group problems into topics so you can use those for reference as well the main takeaway is practice practice and practice that's the only thing that's gonna get you through your interviews a lot of practice there's one final tip that i'm gonna give you and this might not be so obvious so i'm hoping that it's valuable to you all of these websites um like hacker and can lead code they have discussion pages and in those discussion pages you have topics for different kinds of interviews you also have topics that are specific to certain companies and in those topics people are sharing their experiences with interviewing with those companies people get very specific and get very helpful in sharing their experiences and how they prepared so make sure you keep an eye on these discussion pages and you do your research there and that's all i'm gonna say enough about coding let's talk about the second part of job interviews and that's the non-tech stuff for every company you're gonna get like a cultural fit interview in these kind of interviews they're basically trying to see if you as a person are a good fit for the given company these interviews are so important because you can get through the coding interview and be absolutely amazing at it but then if you're not a good fit for the company or you cannot basically show that you're a good fit for a company and you cannot show that you're great to work with and that you're a great team player and you have enough experience and this and that you're not gonna get the job because technical expertise is only half of the package that they're trying to get my advice for that is first of all do your research research every company that you apply for a lot of companies would ask you things about the company itself to check if you have genuine interest and if you've done your homework they're gonna ask you oh what kind of products do you know that we do or they might ask you about what kind of initiatives have you read about that this company does in terms of community outreach or whatever they're gonna ask you questions like this and you need to be prepared i've been asked these kind of questions for most of the companies that i've applied for a lot of them would ask the classics why do you want to work here why do you want to be a software engineer why didn't you become something else why didn't you go to a different company you need to be prepared for those i can't really tell you like an answer every person's answer to these kind of questions would be different but make sure you do your research because no one likes generic answers and you need to you need to convince them that this company that you're applying for is really a place that you want to work for this and that reason not just because oh i want to get money you know oh you have a big name and i want that name on my cv that's not gonna work you need to convince them that you care about the values of the company you care about the work that they do specifically you need to somehow do your research so that you're prepared to answer these kinds of questions going back to what i said in the beginning when i was discussing internship they're usually gonna ask you questions regarding your previous experiences make some kind of a list with the most common questions that companies ask like why do you want to work here or tell me about a time when your team wasn't working well what did you do there's like i don't know a set of 20 or 30 questions that will keep coming up as you're interviewing with companies and what i used to do is make a list of all of them 
them and have some bullet points for each answer obviously I'm still talking about my personal experience so it's not like I'm lying or anything but the thing is when you are at an interview your mind could blank completely like absolutely and then they might ask you what is your name or how old are you and you're still gonna be like uh so that is completely normal and in order to avoid that prepare not not prepare your answers don't basically learn it by heart because people will be able to tell but make sure you have bullet points on each of these questions about the specific experience that you can discuss when they ask you this question and once you have this list you can read it before your interviews and if they ask you the question you're gonna be like oh yeah i should talk about that time when chris joined the team and i was helping him settle in because he was really cool and i was really cool and we were really cool together that's the kind of thing that i'm talking about make sure you just have these associations right at the top of your head so that you can answer quickly and you can answer confidently because sometimes if you're not sure you might look like you're lying even if you're not and that's not good Whew, i have been talking a lot well, that's where internships come in handy if you don't have any internships you can still answer all of those questions just draw on your university experience i'm sure you've had loads of struggles and loads of this and that hackathons are a great topic to discuss if you don't have professional experience go to hackathons i've gone to many hackathons and that's also helped me a lot because it shows passion it shows interest outside of my university curriculum it shows that i'm driven enough to basically go and not sleep for 24 hours and spend my entire weekend just coding something that probably won't work with people that i just met maybe but i've just had fun with it and i enjoyed it and that showed that i really do have a passion for technology and for building stuff and innovating and all of that even if you don't like them still go still go to a couple at least you're gonna have something to discuss and hackathons will give you a lot of material for that kind of questions tell me about a time when so many struggles in hackathons you can really really talk about them i think that's pretty much it you guys i hope you found this helpful i hope i've helped you at least a little bit and if you have any specific questions, please leave comments down below and if I get enough questions, I might make like a Q&A video with specific questions, I would be more than happy to answer them. Just please, please, please don't ask me things like what did they ask you at the Bloomberg interview? I'm not gonna say it, I'm not allowed to talk about that, I'm not allowed to share any kind of interview questions specifically and that's any company you're gonna have like an nda so please don't ask me questions like this i cannot answer them but anything else that i am allowed to talk about i'll be more than happy to make a video to answer all of your specific questions so if you have any leave them down below and again if i get enough of them i will make a video so i think that's a wrap for this topic let's go ahead and open the advent calendars because it's vlogmas day 14 did i do an intro I don't know I hope I did anyway it's vlogmas day 14 so let's open the advent calendars and uh, I'm gonna start with makeup revolution it's a highlighter and it's really pretty let's do oh Jesus everything's falling apart let's do Harry Potter next I don't think there is number 14 There is Oh, that's cute, it's a scrunchie It's like a Gryffindor one I think that's pretty cute And friends See, the friends box is falling apart So things just fall down So I don't know where 14 went But it's not where it should be Oh, I think I know what happened I think on day one we got a couple of things in the first box And I was so surprised that Oh, there's more than one thing I don't think there was supposed to be more than one thing I think number 14 was that sticker This one, I'm pretty sure that that's meant to be number 14 Because 14 is empty So this is all for today Thank you guys so so much for watching Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already I would really appreciate your support And I hope to see you tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 15 Bye guys